hope that you are well and keeping safe. I'm delighted to welcome you to the class today. This is a BJL 4208, um, Writing and Production. And in the class today, we are going to discuss um, the ideation process of uh, writing. And thereafter, we will look at the story structure when we are writing uh, for production. In our previous classes, we've been discussing writing and the kind of writing that we have been discussing in uh, the lower levels has been the writing that encourages uh, students to write news using certain frames that are usually called um, the news formats and where we follow what we call news values, uh, including values such as timeliness, timeliness which has to do with currency of the events that uh, you are writing about, uh, proximity, oddity, bizarreness, you know, among many other values that we have discussed in what you call news writing, and specifically news writing for uh, newspapers, news writing, uh, scripting for TV, and scripting also for radio. But the kind of writing that I want us to discuss today is a bit different from the writing that we have discussed in the previous classes because this is a kind of writing that involves your creativity and it is really a product of your imagination, which is a significant uh, departure from the previous kind of writing that we have conducted uh, in our classes. If you look at uh, the formats that uh, we use for newspapers, for instance, or the kind of news that uh, we write for TV, and the kind of news also that we write for um, radio and now emerging platforms such as um, uh, web portals, um, among others on the internet, we don't really um, require the notion of creativity and personal imagination when you are writing that. But here, we are interested in not just producing content, but writing in a creative way to pass certain messages that can best be passed uh, in a creative um, enterprise. And here, what I have in mind is enterprises such as programs, you know, uh, programs that are produced locally or programs that are produced regionally or even uh, within the international mass media. It could be programs that are touching on what you call um, social issues um, affecting the society, uh, social cultural issues affecting the society, uh, economic and political issues again that are affecting a particular society. Um, it could be films. Um, if you want to script for a film, you know, uh, it will require you to write, you know, based on a product of your imagination and creativity. And it could also be uh, the kind of writing that you do from a personal point of view, where you feel very compelled that you have a story that needs to be told. And um, this story needs to be told from uh, the perspective in which you are looking at it and it relates to the society in different ways. But more importantly, the reason why we are writing here is because we have a burden to the society. Um, there is a message, there is, there is, there is certain ideals that we want to pass, there are certain notions, there are certain um, teachings or themes that we want the society to appreciate uh, through our writing. And for us to do this, we need to peg on to certain characteristics that are necessary for that writing then to become successful. And one of these characteristics then becomes the idea of 
timeliness and relevance to the culture of the day. So this means that um, one has to um, ride on the wave of the culture of the day or uh, the social goings on uh, within the society and using that as a point of uh, drawing you know, material or a source of um, information for your writing, then you are able to communicate um, with the immediate society uh, regarding the events that are happening. And as a writer, as a creator, uh, what lessons you want um, the society to learn out of it. For your writing then to be successful, it, may, it needs not just to be uh, believable, but it also needs to be appealing. And that, that, therefore that is why um, we are interested in trying to understand how best then can we use um, the tools of language and the tools of human imagination. You know, if I go back to uh, this um, illustration here, the tools of human imagination that enable us to be able to communicate in a very unique way, in a very authentic way, in a very original way to society. And using these tools and um, the resources that are uh, you know, uh, within, within, within a writer's domain and provided by the community of uh, writers, including people around the writer who make the writing uh, process smooth and um, become more appealing, such as uh, revised editors, sub-editors, illustration um, designers, among many others. We need to also develop a coherent plot for the stories that we are writing. While the stories must be believable, they must be appealing, they must be driven by a coherent plot, and all this needs to be weaved together in such a manner that uh, audiences can appreciate the craft uh, that, um, that, that the writer uh, is trying to, you know, uh, wrestle with in the process of passing this message. So a good place to begin is what uh, we might look as the four interlocking elements that uh, really uh, characterize the good structure of um, a well-written script or a piece, um, either it's for a program or a film or whatever production it is that you are engaged in. It could be a short story for radio that needs to be read out to audiences or listeners. And, you know, uh, people on the other end uh, receiving the story as it's being read from the studio. There are certain elements that we need to look at um, for this uh, production to be successful. And this is what I'm calling the four Ps. And the four Ps really is just... Um, an acronym to mean uh, the protagonist, the problem, the plot, and the premise, which are the building columns or the building blocks um, that constitute a well-written story for a movie, for instance, a script for a program, um, a short story, any production that you think about that uh, needs to be read out uh, or aired in the mass media would need to have these interlocking elements. So let's look at each one of them uh, um, in its own right and try to see what we can make out of it. So the first one is the protagonist. And the protagonist is the main character or the leading character through whom the story is driven. So it is um, a protagonist can be seen as the vehicle, you know, through which the writer brings to life the ideas of the story. And through the lead character or through the protagonist, we are able to see the struggles, the motives, the dilemmas, the needs and the fears um being being manifested 
as the story develops throughout um, the narrative. And this is best captured um, by looking at the protagonist, you know, the person who is driving the main story uh, from one scene or from one act to another. Then the protagonist does not really work in isolation. And I shall speak to the idea of character, other characters uh, shortly in coming slides. That um, uh, a protagonist works um, with other characters in a narrative. And some of these characters might appear um, momentarily within the narrative and then they disappear. And sometimes uh, they might appear for a longer period uh, throughout the narrative. Uh, sometimes they might be uh, developed, sometimes they might be less developed. But the protagonist really is a very imposing figure throughout the narrative. And it is through the protagonist where we can learn almost everything uh, that the writer wants us to learn, either directly or in a subtle way. So the second P here is for the problem. And the problem is being articulated as a kind of uh, a set of obstacles that, um, or dilemmas that uh, the protagonist uh, tries to solve in the process of uh, the narrative. So um, the reason that is being he or she, or if I can use the word he in a generic sense, that the reason the protagonist is uh, struggling or the reason the protagonist is um, navigating all these, um, you know, um, interlocking um, a lot of motives, dilemmas, needs and fears that are coming together is so that the, the lead character can solve a problem that the writer has presented to them. And then the process of solving that problem is really crafted out in what we call plot. And plot really is how those events and actions and dialogue are all intertwined into one a uh, long thread that is very connected and has a logical flow that becomes the plot of that narrative. And then all these, the protagonist, the problem and the plot, must have an overarching theory or an overarching uh, concept that really guides that particular narrative. And that is what we call uh, the premise, uh, which really governs how the story then um, is uh, threaded out and I will give examples of uh, some premises uh, in coming slides but a premise could be something like you know good always overcomes evil and once the story then is developing along the premise of good overcomes evil you will see a protagonist um, always struggling to overcome a challenge or an obstacle that is presented in an evil way. And probably then the protagonist becomes the good that is going to overcome the evil in a set of interrelated events, actions, and dialogue within the time frame of the story. And this is what we call then the four Ps, uh, which are the interlocking elements that constitute uh, good writing, be it for TV, be it for radio, um, be it for any mass media uh, of your choice uh, that you want to write for. This must, uh, these elements are must-haves uh, in that particular piece. So what is the process of writing if we were to look at it um, in, 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 um, in a more detailed way, that uh, the process itself has got or starts from uh, what you call the pre-writing stage. And at the pre-writing stage is a kind of a brainstorming um, level where the writer then is uh, thinking through 
many ideas that are coming into their minds, you know, and there is that loop between um, the movement from the brain to the paper of the writer, and they are trying to think through who are going to be, who are the, who, who, what are the characters, what characters are we going to have, or what characters am I going to have, so that this narrative becomes uh, complete or the narrative becomes compelling and interesting and believable. How am I going to develop those characters? Um, who is going to be the protagonist? And what is going to be the antagonizing element? You know, what would be fighting the protagonist uh, in this particular narrative? You know, the idea of characterization becomes a very, very important part of uh, the brainstorming process because it is through these characters then that the narrative will be driven, that you will be able to learn through these characters. And then away from thinking about the characters, um, at the pre-writing stage, the writer is equally involved with thinking about um, what would be the background to the narrative. Um, what events will precede the story? What occurrences are going to inform the narrative uh, that I am going to write? That is what you call the background. It is something that the writer needs to put uh, in place so that then uh, the, the writing is not standing in isolation or it's not standing on its own, but there is a background that is either prece that, that comes to contextualize the entire writing. And then, what is the setting of this uh, story? And the setting provides so much in the way of context because it is through the setting then we are able to tease out aspects of culture, aspects of socialization, uh, how the people think. Setting becomes a very important um, aspect of, of, of the pre-writing stage to be thought through because it also creates a certain feel when the audiences are watching or they are reading or they are listening. The setting becomes very, very important in um, evoking certain emotions or in uh, guiding the audiences to look at um, the production in a particular dimension that is required as a result of this chosen setting. And then conflict and resolution really seem to uh, be working uh, as um, elements that are related. The idea of what will be the antagonizing phenomenon, you know, what you call the conflict, that um, the protagonist will be trying to or will be attempting to overcome, so that then once they overcome this kind of um, conflict, we can talk about resolution. And resolution then comes towards the end of uh, the narrative then. Uh, once once, 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 once um, the antagonizing phenomenon has been uh, knocked out by the protagonist. So these are things that um, even before you start the writing process, the writer needs to think about such elements in detail and try to you know, develop some kind of mental maps, uh, develop some mental uh, notions of what of this, um, what all this uh, will will be. And once you start writing them, they might not necessarily be as uh, you thought they would be, but at least there is some kind of a guiding framework that you have already um, articulated there at the pre-writing stage. Then uh, you also need to think about the structure, and we will look um, about the, we will talk about the structure in a detailed uh, format shortly. And here, the structure really is about um, the plot points. What you call um, if if it's a conventional writing, what you call the three act structure, for instance, you need to really think about 
all the elements that will go into each of these acts and how the characters will be deployed to drive the narrative forward in uh, each of uh, the acts, which characters then will drive the narrative from the beginning to the end, which characters will drive the narrative midway, which characters you know, will momentarily appear and go uh, as the narrative proceeds. You know, these are some of the plot points that um, uh, the writer needs to think through. And then at what point then do you introduce certain themes, certain challenges, certain lessons that uh, you want the audiences to draw out from um, the respective plot points um, before then uh, you get into the actual writing. Once you have had this framework, uh, mental framework, that you transferred into paper and you've had that loop again, you know, that back and forth from your mind to the paper and from the paper again to the mind and that back and forth. Now you start writing out uh, your, your, your piece. So um, the ideation process, which is a process that is coming from, you know, uh, the primary word, the idea, um, is the starting point of almost any creative work and any production starts from the idea that the writer has a certain idea that strikes them and once that idea strikes them they want to um, they want to share it with their audiences and they want to share that idea with their audiences because they believe the idea is significant enough um, it has certain hallmarks uh, that there's a lesson to be learned, there are some moral values to be taken out of it, um, there is some entertainment, there is some information, you know, depending on uh, the nature of the idea. So when you're talking about the ideation process, um, you need to look at how the idea is birthed. And a birthing of an idea 